Today's topic is the fall of Rome and the rise of Christianity. When we left Rome, we ended with the last of what historians call, quote, the five good emperors. Rome was in its glory days, controlling much of Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. It was the most powerful empire that we have studied to date. So what changed? How did it all end? Before we can discuss the rise of Christianity, we first need to remind ourselves what the Romans' religion was and how they treated religious minorities in their empire. The Romans were polytheistic, and their gods were like the Greek gods, each having dominion over something in particular, the god of war, the god of love, etc. In fact, they were the same gods as the Greeks, but, but they gave them Roman names. Since they conquered so many peoples, they generally left them to worship their gods as they saw fit, as long as they worshipped Roman gods and participated in festivals honoring the Roman gods. However, there was mistrust between Jewish people and the Eastern cults in Rome. Both did not worship Roman gods. The Jews mistrusted the Romans as well. They had already been persecuted, forced into exile, etc. under every empire that conquered Israel and Judea. Earlier, you learned how Jews in Judea revolted various times between 66 and 135 CE and how Vespasian sold the Jews into slavery to finance the building of the Colosseum. Accounts of the life of Jesus of Nazareth come to us mostly from the four Gospels, the first four books of the New Testament. They were written decades after his death in 33 CE and to the historian are somewhat unreliable sources. They don't agree on some of the details, and by the time they were written, there was controversy over who he was and what it meant for mankind. Still, there are some things we can agree on. One, he was born into a Jewish family in Bethlehem sometime around the year zero. Two, he preached Judaism, but also preached that the end of mankind was near. Three, he had disciples, people who followed his teachings and tried to convince others to do so. However, some of his teachings and practices differed from Judaism. He did not believe in violence or divorce, for example. Many Jews believed he was a prophet, but his followers believed he was the long for Messiah or savior. The Jewish people believed that a future king from David's line would save them and then rule them. He had a small following, but the Romans noticed when he came to challenge the Jewish hierarchy in the spring of 33 CE. This event led to his death by crucifixion, a common punishment by the Romans. Following his death, his brother James continued his ministry. Jesus' followers had given him the title Christ, or anointed one, and this is how his followers came to be known as Christians. However, his followers did not agree on who should follow Christ. James believed that they were a sect of Judaism and only Jews could be Christians. Peter and later Paul believed anyone could be Christians. Some Jews denounced the Christians and even stoned them. Saul was a traveling merchant who did business across the Roman Empire. He originally worked against the early Christians until he said, said Jesus came to him and asked him to be a prophet. Convinced of his vision and duty, he changed his name to Paul and spread Christianity throughout the empire. Like their Jewish forefathers, Christians also refused to worship the Roman emperors. Needless to say, the Romans would continue to persecute both Christians and Jews. Martyrdom, dying for your beliefs, became a common theme in Christianity. As Christianity grew, Rome faced many other problems. As this map demonstrates, the Roman legions were no longer on the offensive, but stationed along the frontiers of the empire to guard against invasions. The vast trademarks controlled by Rome could no longer boast of the safety they offered as invasion became a more and more common theme. At the same time that Rome was being attacked by the Germanic tribes, Rome also suffered from numerous civil wars. Around 300 CE, Rome had 26 different emperors in just 50 years. They also suffered from plague, famine, and high inflation. Diocletian, the emperor from, who was emperor from 284 to 305 CE, decided that it was just too big to rule for one person, so he divided the empire, first into four regions with four rulers, but later the descendants of these rulers unite and form two regions, the Eastern and the Western Empires. 
Then, in 324 CE, Constantine reunites the empire but moves the capital to Byzantium, renames it Constantinople in what is now modern day Istanbul, Turkey. According to the Romans, the Germanic peoples were, quote, barbarians, but their relationship with Rome was always changing. They traded with them, sometimes they enlisted them as soldiers, sometimes they fought, sometimes they punished them for fighting. Of course, part of the problem was the civil wars of the Romans. The Germans believed that the treaties they made with the Roman Empire uh, were only good as long as the emperor who made it was still alive. Thus, when each new emperor came to power, they started over with the Germans. The Germanic peoples were ethnically Huns from the Asian steppes. They were nomads who were unattached to land. They were expert horsemen and vicious warriors. They were pagan and polytheistic. While their ancestry was Hun, they had many tribes whom were distinct from each other. They did, however, share a common language, religion, culture, and economic system. By 400 CE, their numbers were larger and they were more organized than the Roman soldiers. As Rome lost land, they lost tax revenues, and when that happened, they had trouble paying soldiers in the West. This map shows the Western and Eastern Empire and the different peoples in the West who challenged the Romans. As has been suggested, the Western Roman Empire would be threatened by Christians and German invasions alike. Christians became a much larger threat to Rome than the Jews were, in part because Jews did not seek new members, but Christians did. They did not threaten Rome's polytheistic religion, but they did threaten the hierarchical nature of Rome because of its emphasis on kindness regardless of social rank. Therefore, many Roman emperors persecuted Christians. By the time of Constantine's conversion to Christianity, the Christians had already started a hierarchy of their own. The Archbishop of Rome became the Pope or father of the Christian church. The Emperor Constantine was no fan of Christians. However, during a battle, Constantine had his vision of a cross. When he wins the battle, he believes he was helped by the Christian God and converts to Christianity. He issued the Edict of Milan in the same year ending the persecution of Christians. As Christianity was the religion of the emperor, many wealthy people converted to win the favor of the emperor. By 380 CE, it is made the official state religion. Both the Eastern and Western Empire, as well as the Christian church, start to diverge in the late 390s, early 400s. In the Eastern Church, the emperors were the head of the church and they didn't follow the papacy. In 395 AD, Rome and Constantinople split for good, thus becoming two separate empires. In 410 CE, Rome is sacked by Germans, the Vandals in Spain. The Western Empire is in trouble. Officially, Rome falls in 476 CE. But the Rome of that year was a fraction of what it was in its golden age. Because of the separation of the church into its own hierarchy, it would remain relatively intact despite the fall of Rome. Its influence, of course, in Europe would be profound and long lasting.